Are you struggling to understand what labs you should be getting to one to promote your health or even understand what they mean when you do get these labs? Are the annual labs that you get from your doctor enough to fully understand what changes you need to make in life? Well, today we're going to talk about five essential labs that are really important to understand your metabolic health and help you lose weight for those who are really struggling. Because the factors that will manipulate these labs are really crucial to one, promote healthy metabolism, but also, you know, improve your metabolic health, but also will help you lose weight. So understanding some objective measures like certain labs that you can repeat over time is a great way to know if you're moving the dial beyond what's going on in the scale, right? Because as you know, we talk about body composition and things. So there's much more to a healthy body composition versus just the number that you're seeing on this scale. So first of all, I want to kind of introduce this whole concept of um, assessment, right? So what does that mean? What are we actually assessing? And so an assessment is basically uh, understanding where you're at at this moment. Like what is your clinical health status at this very moment? And the reason it's important is that it changes, right? So some people that I work with will say, oh man, my labs only dropped this much, or now my numbers are here, that means that I'm doing nothing right. No, it just means there might be some tweaking, right? So let's say that someone was eating a whole food plant-based diet and they weren't seeing one, maybe the, the scale wasn't moving or maybe their cholesterol wasn't improving. Sometimes just some tweaks and understanding the physiology and what you need to be focusing on for you personally is all that you need to see the numbers go where you want them to go. And I think it's really important to understand that piece of it. And that comes through assessment and making sure that you're looking at these labs, not just as a good or bad number, but these are data, right? And these are data that will drive informed decisions, which will allow you to make different choices in the activities that you're doing, the foods that you're choosing, all those things. So that's the important piece of understanding why an assessment is really important. And assessment is one of the... Um, points of the framework that I work with people to master metabolism, which we'll get to here in a minute. So first of all, let's talk about the five labs. The first one I want to speak to is your lipid panel, right? So this tests cholesterol levels, um, including LDL or your bad cholesterol and HDL, which is also your good cholesterol and triglycerides. So now high levels of LDL and triglycerides can indicate um, an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, insulin resistance, um, which also increases inflammation, again, which this is just a snowball taking effect. And high triglycerides will absolutely affect number, not only your bad cholesterol, because it initiates the liver to create more of what we call VLDL to package up this, um, these fats and different things, but it'll also affect your HDL, your good cholesterol. So anyway, these things here are the number one labs that we would want to test to see where your metabolic health is and if you're at risk again for insulin resistance and if you're struggling to lose weight especially. Next would be something you're probably thinking already is a hemoglobin A1C. So basically this tells me the stickiness of your red blood cells over the past two to three months. And if you have higher blood sugars, your blood sugars or your blood cells, red blood cells get a little bit more sticky and your A1C will reflect that. Now, what's interesting is people who, let's say they're eating a standard American diet, and then they go to a, a really healthy whole food plant-based diet, you will see rapid improvements in your blood sugars, but you won't necessarily see that rapid change in an A1C, again, because it takes a little bit of time every two to three months to see some improvement. So don't be dis dissuaded if you do check this, let's say in 30 days, you'll see it drop a little bit, but that's not a true picture of where you are actually at that current moment. And that gets to the point where I like to use CGMs, I can use glucose monitor. It kind of has this cool little indicator on the dashboard of what your average A1C might be about for the last two weeks. So there's some other tests you can do, but the A1C is an important one. So I wanted to highlight that. In addition, the fasting glucose, right? So this is your morning blood sugar or after you've been fasting for at least eight to 12 hours. And the reason this is important, it tells me if you're staying at this elevated level, right? So your body's either not producing enough insulin or if it is producing insulin, your body is insulin resistant. And this tells me a lot of things that are occurring inside your metabolic health is not where we want it to be. So you want those blood sugars to be under 100 minimally, 
um, when you wake up in the morning. And that's again where the CGM is super helpful. You don't have to poke your finger. I am not a real big fan of pain. So that's really helpful with the CGM. It's, it's, it's just continuous. Anyway, fasting glucose. Another one is your fasting insulin, right? So fasting insulin tells me, yes, I'm having to make a lot of insulin to get these blood sugars under control. If it's under 5.5, that's fantastic. If it's above that, there might be some work that we need to do. And then utilizing the fasting insulin and the fasting glucose, we can actually calculate your insulin resistance score. And there is a calculation you can find online how to do that. Again, that's part of the, the framework that I utilize with my patients to master the metabolism and lose weight. So what is the last test we want you to do is your liver function test. <clears throat> because um, measuring the uh, liver enzymes, it really is an important piece to understanding, are you at risk for fatty liver? Which tells me there's, again, a lot of visceral fat issues going on where you're not just storing fat under the skin, the subcutaneous fat, but now your body is actually depositing fat in things like the liver and the muscle and other organs, which puts you at increased risk for heart attack, stroke, diabetes, and all those other things. <clears throat> so those are the five. Uh, we have, again, lipid panel, A1C, a fasting glucose, a fasting insulin, and liver function test. Um, come back every day this next over this next week. I'll be speaking specifically to each of those tests a little bit more in depth. And that will be very helpful for you, I hope, moving forward. And by the way, I do have a free five steps to mastering metabolism and losing weight. I just got to go deeper dive into all these different things. And I speak to the four mistakes that people make on their weight loss journal and how to correct. And so hope you found that helpful. The link is below in the uh, description or it's in the bio if you're watching on Instagram. Thanks again for your time. As always, I'm sending you love, joy, peace, and healing. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope you found this helpful. And again, please share with anyone that you think might find benefit to this. And I hope to see you in the free masterclass. You guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.